While I think that Disneyland is probably Disney's best theme park, I think that Animal Kingdom is actually superior if you're just judging on theming alone. Every land really pulls its weight in terms of immersive theming, and while your average guest isn't going to find it as interesting as more overt theming elements found in other parks, there's still a lot of richness when you take the time to observe and explore the details found throughout the various lands here. You'll often see discourse online referring to how Dinoland USA is the worst area of the park, and while I think that a lot of mistakes were made in incorporating Chester and Hester's Dinorama into the land in 2002, there's still so many interesting things going on here that most people often overlook. The theming is very intentionally tongue-in-cheek, exploring humanity's relationship to dinosaurs as a form of cultural kitsch, which, in my opinion, is a really unique way of interpreting this subject for the park, especially since a major goal and theme of Animal Kingdom was to explore human relationships with animals. The often ridiculous elements found throughout the land reveal the story of a town that saw a tourism boom due to fossil discoveries and has since become home to the Dino Institute, which meddles with time travel technology and offers tours back in time. I've spoken at length about Dinoland in a much older video, so I won't be covering it in extensive detail here, but the point is that this is an area of the park with really great theming that is often overlooked by most people and is, in my opinion, cheapened by the incorporation of Dinorama, which feels a little too tacky for most. Still, I think there's a ton of potential here for an incredible land, and unfortunately, creatively bankrupt Disney leadership has threatened to replace it, first with nonsense like Zootopia and Moana, and most recently, Encanto and Indiana Jones. Obviously, these plans are not going to happen, because even though Dinosaur shares a similar track layout with Indy and Disneyland, realistically, they aren't going to retheme this to a 30-year-old ride that they barely bothered to maintain anyways. Also, did they not just indicate that they wanted to do Encanto for the Magic Kingdom? It's clear that they're just throwing out whatever ideas they can to generate interest, but realistically, it's a lot of empty promises, which ultimately is good because it gives me hope that a future CEO might see the actual potential here. So while I'm not someone who has experience in attraction design, I do think that I very much have a good idea that would fix Dinoland and would resonate far better with general park goers than whatever Disney itself can come up with. What I want to propose is a time-traveling dinosaur roller coaster, replacing Chester and Hester's Dinorama, and really pushing the envelope in terms of a storytelling coaster that offers a perilous journey through abandoned fossil mines, ultimately resulting in an escape back in time to a prehistoric era to lure back an escaped predator. I think that the danger with proposing attraction ideas, especially when you're not a professional designer, is that most people's ideas are often wildly unrealistic, or not really designed with infrastructure or theming taken into consideration. In contrast, this is something that I've spent a lot of time thinking about and taken a lot of different factors into consideration in a way that makes sense for a brand new and thematically interesting e-ticket for Animal Kingdom. So, if you're willing to listen to me pitch what I think is an exciting idea and justify why it needs to exist, I think you'll end up really quite interested, especially when the alternative is lazy nonsense that would end up damaging the park. If you know the story of Dinoland USA, then you'll know that when Animal Kingdom was in development, Imagineers were given a choice between building one of two lands for opening. The first was an incredible idea that explored mythical animals called Beastly Kingdom It was promised to be a Phase 2 project. This obviously never happened, as the area is where Pandora exists today. The other idea was for Dinoland, which originally would have hosted two attractions. One of these was a slow-moving family attraction that would have taken riders back in time to see various dinosaurs, and reportedly took place both indoors and outdoors, as if it were a dinosaur-themed version of the Jungle Cruise. Very few details exist on what this was intended to be, and don't answer whether it was actually a boat ride or not, but the idea does sound interesting, though quite conceptually similar to Epcot's Universe of Energy. The other attraction was an exciting e-ticket called The Excavator, a roller coaster that would have gone through a fossil dig site, and while manufactured from steel, would have been themed to look like it was made from wood, just like California Screamin' or Expedition Everest. 
Throughout the track, riders would have close encounters with dismantled construction equipment that was repurposed into metal dinosaurs. The original theme of Dino Land had a similar story to the land as we know it today, where fossils were discovered in 1947, and the town evolved into a kitsch roadside attraction, so the excavator makes sense as an extension of this. It also leads me to wonder if the dinosaur tour along the river was supposed to actually bring riders back in time with a more realistic interpretation, or if it would have been something more akin to a hokey dark ride that was intended to be silly, with the dinosaurs portrayed through rudimentary mechanical figures. Regardless, I think that the version of Dino Land that the park ended up receiving with the terrifying countdown to extinction is a significantly better evolution of the original idea that still maintains the unique kitsch theming. However, Countdown to Extinction was much more ambitious and clearly intended to rival Jurassic Park as Universal opened Islands of Adventure in 1999, just a year after Animal Kingdom. I suspect that this is likely the reason that Dino Land was chosen over Beastly Kingdom, and while I would have definitely liked to see that too, I'm glad that Dino Land was chosen because Dinosaur, which Countdown to Extinction is now known as today, is by far one of Disney's most interesting and unique attractions. It's also important because it evolves the story of Dino Land away from just a roadside attraction and offers a contrasting and more mature experience with the Dino Institute bringing riders back in time. To me, the overall lore and story of Dino Land is incredibly interesting and I think has a lot of potential for future attractions, and so conceptually, my idea for a time traveling coaster starts with the Dino Institute. If you walk around Dino Land today, especially at the restaurant Osaurus, you'll see that interns from the Dino Institute are often portrayed as silly dinosaur nerds that cause dinosaur-themed mayhem, not unlike the antics that you might encounter in a college dorm. The story of this new Dino Land coaster starts with two interns who want to experiment with a portable time travel device developed within the Dino Institute. The device itself is a piece of hardware that opens portals back in time wherever it's aimed, and wanting to mess around with it, the intern snuck the device through the town late at night and into a fossil dig site to test it before anyone would notice it was missing. In terms of story, I would slightly retheme the boneyard, which is the kids' play area, into dig site A, and the location of this new attraction would be considered dig site B. However, as the interns brought the portable time travel device into a fossil mine shaft, a small earthquake sent them into a panic, man running out, realized that they had left the device behind. The role of park guest is to be invited in under the guise of being paleontologists who want to tour the dig site, but the interns secretly have everyone board an old mine train rigged with a magnet that will recover the device which fell under the track. The location of this attraction within the story of Dino Land does retcon the town a bit, as Dino Land today is vaguely described as being somewhere in the American South. However, the town itself has always given me a Route 66 type of vibe, and so I think that placing the town somewhere that is vaguely in the American Southwest makes more sense for what I have in mind. The facade of this roller coaster would be something akin to Big Thunder Mountain, but it also needs to be distinct and different enough to not be compared to it, while also being low enough to the ground to avoid clashing with the mountain range of Expedition Everest. Since Disney has already tackled the orange rock features of Monument Valley with Big Thunder Mountain and Radiator Springs, I think it's important to differentiate the rock work for this dino coaster by making it a lighter, more pink color palette filled with small contrasting green vegetation and the occasional waterfall, inspired by Zion National Park in Utah. The facade of the attraction would also use forced perspective to make it appear as if the coaster is traveling down a lush but rocky canyon along a river to give Dino Land some impressive depth, yet wouldn't be tall enough to really go past the tree line, therefore not interfering with sight lines from other areas of the park, especially near Everest. So, having this aesthetic and setting in mind, with the premise of recovering the portable time travel device, let me more specifically illustrate the cue, story, and scenes of the ride itself to convince you that this is a better idea than what Disney can produce. The footprint of Chester and Hester's Dino-Rama is a bit of a strange shape, but I think that the attraction entrance should sit right where Triceratops Spin is currently located. If you look from above, you can see how this provides plenty of winding outdoor queue space full of rockwork, vegetation, paleontology equipment, and half-exposed fossils to fill out the space around the queue pathway. Also worth mentioning is that in many ways, this attraction works as a spiritual successor to the excavator, and so people queuing will be able to see construction equipment repurposed into mechanical dinosaurs, which are scattered about. 
I envision this as a longer version of the outdoor portion of the Magic Kingdom Big Thunder Mountain queue, winding subtly upwards until you reach the area where Primeval World used to be located, and guess will enter a former lodge for sightseers, which architecturally resembles a Pacific Northwest log cabin style building, similar to Disney's Grand Californian or Wilderness Lodge, but just on a much smaller scale. Inside, guests wind throughout the various rooms which are littered with dinosaur kitsch and other miscellaneous decorations that reveal that this abandoned building is a popular hangout spot on the weekends for interns at the Dino Institute. Towards the end of the queue, guests enter a small movie theater where a projector plays a pre-recorded message from the interns who misplaced the time travel device, explaining the situation and wrangling you into helping them while they're currently stuck at the Dino Institute doing trivial, mind-numbing tasks not worth their time. As the doors open, guests are funneled outside into a covered portion of the queue and ride station, designed to look like a former bus station that has been refitted with minecart track when the lodge was eventually taken over by paleontologists in the 1960s after moving on from Dig Site A, now establishing Dig Site B. Before I talk about the ride portion itself, I do want to also say that I envision the load and unload situation to be similar to Expedition Everest, where the train heads north out of the load station and are completing the ride as riders disembark at a separate unload station which leads back to the main road in the town after a small winding pathway. Where the dinosaur gift shops are located currently, they would also be joined by other buildings on the left, one of which is an exit gift shop from the coaster which everyone is funneled through. Moving on to the ride layout itself, riders are secured in minecarts and are sent out into the dig site immediately in front of the canyon facade. The train winds around this area encountering more mining equipment and mechanical dinosaurs, before then entering a tunnel into a mine shaft right before the canyon. At this point, the train enters an indoor show building that fills in the pot of land behind where Primeval World used to stand, also replacing a backstage building. Generally, I wouldn't move infrastructure like this, but I think that the ride justifies demolishing this building and placing it elsewhere. After entering the mine shaft, the train dips down into the darkness, traveling down two layers of a downward helix that isn't too intense but disorients riders and makes them feel as if they're traveling pretty far in the almost complete darkness. Pulling out of this, the train twists through a cavern over underground pools fed by waterfalls, which have eroded some of the rock away, revealing portions of dinosaur fossils which are visible with mining lighting strung up overhead. Taking a right, the train stops in a dugout cavern with mining equipment scattered throughout, and the train stops, with one of the interns appearing over the speakers to say that they've remotely triggered the brakes, and that the time travel device is under the track. On the right, riders see a skeleton half dug out from the wall, not dissimilar to the T-Rex bones from the Jurassic Park logo, however because the T-Rex is so synonymous with that franchise, I'll say that the bones are from a Carnotaurus since that's what Disney went with for Countdown to Extinction, although this could really be any predator you wanted. As the intern announces that they're activating the magnet under the train, a loud metal noise plays underneath as if now attached, but a new, mysterious electronic noise plays as the lighting through the cavern begins to flicker. The intern shouts out in alarm that the device has accidentally been activated, and the lights go out with a flash, blinding riders as they briefly sit in darkness, allowing a hidden door in the wall to move. From out of nowhere, a portal appears where the Carnotaurus bones embedded in the seemingly solid rock wall were, revealing a lush jungle and an animatronic Carnotaurus that is at first surprised to see riders, but quickly becomes aggressive and roars, realizing its next meal is right in front of it. The intern shouts out over the speakers that it's time to go, and the train launches forward into the darkness, going through a number of twists and turns in the dark to create a briefly disorienting moment of thrills as audio cues of the Carnotaurus play throughout, as if coming close to catching the train. Emerging out into another lit cavern with fossils embedded in the walls, the train breaks and the intern comes back in over the speakers, noting that they've reached a dead end and there's only one way out opening a portal back in time, and maybe just leading the predator through and trapping it back in its own time period. As a roar is heard from behind, the train then launches off into a mine shaft, and turning the corner, a portal opens up and riders speed out from a cliff face into a prehistoric swamp. Recycling ideas from both the original Dino Land River Ride and from the Universe of Energy, the train winds alongside rocks dividing riders from a marsh filled with prehistoric species, including long-necked dinosaurs that fit into whichever era makes sense with the Predator. In the case of the Carnotaurus, it would be the late Cretaceous. Banking right, the train moves through a thick jungle, startling a number of other dinosaur species, and finally on breaking through, 
the Carnotaurus is spotted in a small clearing, ready to run at the train. Not stopping, the time travel device is activated, and another portal opens up on a different cliff face as the train flies through back into the mine trying to escape. Moving through a short bend, the train then begins ascending a lift hill, and the intern comes in over the speakers again, congratulating them on escaping the Carnotaurus, and more importantly, recovering the time traveling device. On cresting the lift hill, ominous music begins to play as the shadow of the Carnotaurus can be seen on the upcoming wall, but the train can't be stopped and as it falls down a short dip and banks left back outside, it's revealed that the shadow was cast by a mechanical dinosaur constructed by one of the interns, and the train stops in front of it in a block zone right before the unload station. With one final thrill, the mechanical beast lurches forward with a loud metal clang, and the train returns back to the station, where riders take a short pathway back to the town, concluding the experience for this attraction. While I may or may not have pitched an interesting idea, at the very least, I feel that I've tried a lot harder than Disney is currently attempting to do. This idea, especially with the portal effects, seems really different and exciting to me, and works as a spiritual successor to earlier Dinoland ideas, specifically with the silliness of the excavator, and the scene where riders jump through time, which was inspired by the river attraction. The story of the ride with how it's worked into the overall lore of Dinoland seems thematically satisfying to me, especially with how it relates to the Dino Institute, while still providing a distinctly different but still thrilling chase from the Carnotaurus. While I think that a lot of people are skeptical of the idea of pitching a roller coaster, especially as this is relatively close to Expedition Everest, I think it works because it offers a less intense experience that hides most of its thrills in the dark, like Space Mountain, it also has very distinct scenes that distinguishes this as a more story-driven experience rather than just a thrilling one. Granted, I've criticized Seven Dwarfs Mine Train for not being thrilling enough, so it's certainly a higher thrill level than that, but this is a coaster that is similar in that it's more accessible to younger riders, while also not being nearly as scary as Dinosaur currently is. However, with this Dino-themed coaster comes a general revision to Dinoland USA. First, I want to say that I don't think much needs to be changed with the buildings, and that adding in this new impressive facade with natural-feeling rockwork with the town sitting alongside it will feel very different than how it does sitting right next to Chester and Hester's Dino-Rama. In terms of additions, it appears that Walt Disney World management hates entertainment and cuts treatment spirit every chance they get, but since this is my idea to improve Dinoland, I would add in roaming characters and interns from the Dino Institute, which share dinosaur facts but also get into a number of ridiculous comedic situations throughout the land. It's a small addition, but something that I think would add a lot and really helps general park goers better understand the kitsch dinosaur theme found in the shops and in the restaurant. Finally, I think that once the coaster is built, Dinosaur should go down for a massive refurbishment, regaining its name as Countdown to Extinction, and adding additional lighting and projection effects, just as Disney did in 2017. I would also reactivate the Flying Ornithochiris, and possibly consider adding in additional animatronics to fill out some of the scenes a bit better, as well as a burning wood scent to the final scene with the Iguanodon. Generally, I think that Dinosaur is quite underrated as an attraction, which I do think is fueled by the poor state of the ride, as well as the current ugliness of Dinoland, but recontextualized into a refreshed land with a brand new time-traveling roller coaster, I do think it stands out a bit better and would draw in a lot more people than it currently does. So while my visuals haven't been the best in illustrating my idea because I'm certainly not an artist, Hopefully I've painted an exciting picture for what this coaster might be, and how it fits both thematically and physically within Dinoland USA, working to revitalize it and turn it into something much more interesting than it currently is. While I doubt that Disney would ever take this idea, and is instead content to just keep announcing weird IP lands, you can also help this video, and therefore this idea, reach a wider audience by just leaving a like. Because, at the very least, it's better than whatever Disney is doing. Also, if you enjoy videos like these but have not yet subscribed and hit the bell notification, you can do so now to be alerted to when anything new is released.